Okay, so I think it's very simple. Alhamdulillah, believe me, Islam in its basic is very simple. Islam is very simple. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave a khutbah, and in the khutbah, after the khutbah, one companion, he stood up, he said, Ya Rasulullah, it seems as if this is a farewell sermon. So advise us. So the Prophet gave this khutbah, and the people thought it's as if he's saying goodbye. So this one companion became very worried. He said, advise us, give us some last advice. The Prophet said, I advise you to have taqwa. This is the first thing. I advise you to have taqwa of Allah. So here's the first thing, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you. If you want to know what is the right manhaj, it's all irrelevant. If you don't have taqwa, it's irrelevant. And is taqwa? Taqwa is not easy to acquire. This is something I've been studying. I was promising on, I do these Facebook lives. I used to do it on Thursday. Now I do it on Wednesday, midday UK time. And uh, I promised, I was saying to all my listeners, I will, I'm going to do some uh, videos and put it on YouTube, how to get taqwa. Then when I started to study, like one week came two weeks, came three weeks, came four weeks, <laughs> because I realized, well, this is very big subject, you know, much bigger than I thought. So this taqwa is very important. You know, on our journey to Allah, it is the most important provision to have taqwa. So taqwa is, <clears throat> it's even very hard to explain what is taqwa. It's hard to explain it, actually. It is something inside yourself. Really, if I, if I, if I, if I really try to explain what is taqwa, it is this, like a feeling or an emotion or something, you know, there's something inside yourself that when you see haram, you want to keep away from it. And when you see good, you want to go towards it. That's really what is taqwa. It's this feeling that drives you towards the, the good things and drives you away from the bad things. So when you see something bad, you are very careful and cautious. I'm saying this, brother, why? Because there are some people who talk about manhaj and being on the right manhaj. But when you see the way they talk and the way they behave and the way they have manners, you will realize they have no taqwa. <laughs> because a person with taqwa will never treat others like this and behave with others like the way they behave. Not possible. So the first thing is you have to develop this consciousness of Allah. And this is the key, brothers, really. You have to understand that the key is your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your connection with Allah, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your connection with Allah, being mindful of Allah. And to be mindful of Allah, you can't really be mindful of Allah unless you understand the character and the personality and the manners of Rasulullah <clears throat> It's not just about studying a hadith. You may know one hadith. But if you can't take that hadith and then put that in the context of how the Prophet ﷺ behaved, you will you will go very far astray. This is what I see. The brothers find one hadith about, oh, the people of Bid'ah, this and that. They apply this hadith. But you, if you imagine the Prophet ﷺ behaving like they behaved, never. You couldn't imagine it. Something wrong. This is a big thing. So the first thing the Prophet said, I advise you to have taqwa of Allah. To be mindful of Allah. This is the first thing. And to hear and obey your Amir. Even if he is an Abyssinian slave. And to hold on to the Quran and Sunnah. This is what the Prophet wasallam said. To hold on to the Quran and Sunnah and bite it with your teeth. And beware of the new things in the religion. So this is the advice the Prophet ﷺ gave us. Follow my sunnah and the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin. Follow my sunnah and the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin. So we stick to this. Stick to it. Bite it with your teeth. Hold on to this. The sunnah of Rasulullah ﷺ, the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin. Beware of new things in religion. This is the right manhaj. Alhamdulillah. If you follow this, alhamdulillah, you'll be fine. 
But you know, th this is, a, you know, you can call yourself Salafi. Does that make you right? No, you can call yourself anything. You can give yourself any name you like. You can write it on your head, have a t-shirt. I am a Salafi. Does that make you on the minhaj? Does that make you following the sunnah of the Prophet and the Khulafa al rashidin Call yourself any name you like. The name, there's nothing in a name, brothers. There's nothing in a name. The reality is in your manners, in your behavior, in your knowledge, in your application. That is the reality. Yes, everyone should try to follow the Prophet and the early generations of Muslims. But it's not about a name or a label. But to believe, believe me, if I said today, if you're asking me this question, I said, the Salafi manhaj is the right manhaj, and I just answered. That's it, brother. Let's move. That will not do justice. Why? Because unfortunately, there are so many people who call themselves Salafi, and you do not see from them, are they on the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in their manners and their akhlaq and their adab, even some of them, to be honest, in, even in their aqidah. They talk about bid'ah, but even the way they talk about bid'ah, even some of the stuff they do, they themselves, it's not, it's not, it's bid'ah. This is a big, comp you see, you have to understand, this is the problem, brother. Some people think that these things are like a stick that the, uh, the Prophet has given us to beat people on the head. And they like to beat everyone on the head with this stick. They don't look at themselves. No, this is for you. This advice of the Prophet ﷺ is for you. For you to follow, not to, be a, to have a stick to hit everybody else with. This is the problem. So brother, this is my advice. This is a big subject, you know, alhamdulillah. Okay, so I hope that makes it clear.